this detachment of the king's guard alongside the band of the court we passed. And on the balcony there, the trumpeters, the state trumpeters of the household cavalry. The garter king of arms is accompanied by the Earl Marshal and other officers of arms and the sergeant at arms will make the first and principal proclamation. David finds White, the Garter King of Arms, who will shortly speak. aloft with the camera phones waiting to catch this moment. Robert Hartman is with me again. It will be a very simple moment, but it is a highly significant one. Almighty God, to call to his mercy our late sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth II, of blessed and glorious memory, by whose decease the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is solely and rightfully come to the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George. We, therefore, the Lord's spiritual and temporal of this realm, and members of the House of Commons, together with other members of Her Late Majesty's Privy Council, and representatives of the realms and territories, aldermen and citizens of London and others, do now hereby, with one voice and consent of tongue and heart, publish and proclaim that the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George is now, by the death of our late sovereign of happy memory, become our only lawful and rightful liege lord, Charles III. By the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of his other realms and territories, King, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to whom we do acknowledge all faith and obedience, with humble affection, beseeching God, by whom kings and queens do reign, to bless his majesty with long and happy years to reign over us. Given at St. James's Palace, this 10th day of September, in the year of our Lord, 2022.
chance for his majesty the king. Hip, hip. Inside of the balcony party, go back inside St. James's Palace through the opening that has been created for them by literally removing the window, Robert Hartman. That was, that was quite a moment, wasn't it? That, that really was. I mean, there we had God the King of Arms um, doing what God the King of Arms has done for centuries. We just saw a, 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 a piece of British Army drill you very rarely see of the, uh, the Coldstream Guards there doing a, a removed headdress and three cheers um, while armed. I mean, sometimes you see that at, on, on, on parades without, uh, without uh, weapons, but um, beautifully done. Uh, and I thought what was so telling there was the way this, this event is echoing beyond these ancient walls. You could hear the crowds out in the mouth, many of whom will be following this on, on their phones or on TV and radio, and, and, and the, the, the cheers echoing. It wasn't just three cheers here in, in, uh, in, in St. James's Palace. Um, but I think everyone is just thrilled, really, to be seeing and taking part in something that hitherto was, was off limits, except to a handful of very elderly men. And very moving for you, Elizabeth Buchanan, I know you worked so closely with the then Prince Charles. I could tell, watching you in the studio here at that moment, uh, it was quite a moment for you personally as well to see your old boss. <laughs> It is, it is an extraordinary moment to see King. After, after the, uh, his extraordinary decades serving this nation as Prince of Wales, now to assume the role of King. And what also struck me, uh, looking at the crowds there, the different age groups that are there, and, and the solemnity of this moment also combined the very personal nature, the things that he is speaking about, about his mother, about his wife, about his sister, his brothers, and this is something about the Prince of Wales. He is able to operate at an Olympian height, often a global. He's talking about climate change, these big issues of the day. And yet he's also focused on people and individuals. And I can remember an event when we were in Wales once. I think it was the time of Prince William's 21st birthday. And we did a, a, a tour up there. And he met a lady in, in the crowd who had just been diagnosed with cancer. And he summoned me over and he said, Elizabeth, please, this is Mrs. Jones. I've changed her name please can you make sure that she receives help from the Bristol Cancer Help Centre, which is one of its patronages, to go alongside her, her very intensive therapy. I did all that. Two weeks later, he's about to make a speech for the European Parliament. I'm drafting that speech. It's late at night. The phone rings. Elizabeth, yes, Your Royal Highness. How is Mrs. Jones? Well, I'm going, I'm writing a speech for the European Parliament. He wanted to know how Mrs. Jones was. He has an elephantine memory. He has an elephantine memory, which is uh, before the poor private secretaries. Now, just as all that was happening, there were also more uh, gun salutes. There were 96 rounds fired yesterday for the death of the Queen, but this, uh, these were the ones that were fired yesterday in London and at saluting stations around the world, indeed. And then today, the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery began firing their guns to mark the accession of His Majesty the King. At the moment that that principal proclamation began, the King's troops firing 41 guns in Hyde Park. The Honourable Artillery Company fired 62 guns at the Tower of London. With that all happening at the same time, at 11 o'clock, as the proclamation, the <coughs> principal pro proclamation was read out there at St. James's Palace, Edinburgh, as you can see there in Castle. Um, where those guns were 
also.